Good. Good. Yep. I'm Adrian Lee, the Wing Chun instructor at Boston University. And right now I'm training with my team to, in preparation for the tournament. And I just feel like I should talk about some of the fundamentals of Wing Chun, traditional and non-traditional. So I never really explained the, my, our concept of Wing Chun in terms of structure in front of camera, so I'm going to do that now. So our Wing Chun structure is based off having your, well, it's from, this is where I first originally learned is from the Chu Chun Tin lineage. But we start off from having a proper structure of aligning your whole body together and basing off the Wing Chun triangular structure. So why a triangle? Best shape for having stuff pierced on top or having it deflect off. So our stance in itself, Yizu Kiyoma, relies on a triangle. Your body is a triangle in itself. And our stance movement from here is also a triangle. So remember, sword tips, arrow tips, all of that would slide off and will pierce away through so before our attacks are. So that's one of the fundamental structures of that. So if she was to throw a very powerful attack, all I have to do is keep my structure up and it will slide off. Like that. So that's very basic for the triangle. And now, relaxation. Why is it very important? Relaxing allows you to align your whole body together and you actually are able to use a lot more force with a lot less effort of just relaxation. So um, I don't have to demonstrate this again because I do this a lot in my other videos, but with relaxation over here, so like relaxing the neck, you're not using any single part of your body to generate power. When she first started off, she actually has like a tense neck. But now that she's learned to relax a lot more, she's able to line up her whole spine. So if I was to bend her right now, even if I use all my force, her aligned body up here allows her to withstand that force just because she's sitting that into her whole stance from there. And that's the relaxation and alignment part of structure. Another part that's very fundamental, traditional sense of Feng Chen, that is, is your sensitivity. We practice that in Qi Sao, and that offers another sense. So, for example, fighters use whatever senses they have in the fight. Sense of sight, obviously. Sense of sound, you can hear your opponent coming. You don't use your taste, you just don't want to. Um, sense of touch. So, fighters always use sense of touch. When you get hit somewhere, you know it's coming. And you know, you sense the pain from that. But what we want to do in Wing Chun is basically have that sense and amplify it. So, if she touches my arm basically over here, I can sense this sliding over, and I know that the punch is coming, and I can deflect it off. So, one thing we do in Chi Sao that Wing Chun is famous for is having your eyes closed and Chi Sao at the same time. And there's actually no magic. So, if she strikes me right now, I can sense it coming, and I can find her stance from there. Here's the secret behind it. A lot of seafoods would not explain this. But, basically, what I'm doing right now is, so, is basically if I'm standing here right now, if she's not touching me and she comes to hit me, there's no way I can block it because I can't see. I'm blind if I, my eyes are closed and there's no way I can block that. However, if she had to touch me first before she attacks, I know exactly where she is. Secret behind this is that you train your touch and sensitivity reaction time to a point where the moment she touches you, you can already envision your opponent in front of you. Say like my eyes are closed but she hits me with her right hand and I, I sense her right hand. I know that this is the back of her hand and this is her fingers right here. So immediately my mind draws a uh, picture of Amanda in front of me right now. So if she, this is her right hand, I have to say like her body is most likely here and her left arm is here. So if I put my arm up on this direction, I have a pretty high chance of blocking the next attack. And the moment I touch, if I react quicker than her, I can use the slash and enter the space of attack before she can react over here. So cheese out and the sensitivity is not magic. It's just having a very high sense of touch and reaction time. 
one of the non-traditional things in Wing Chun that we definitely should talk about the fundamentals is hand movement and agility. So you see in the movies, like Ant Man for example, the Grandmaster just stands there and whatever, no matter how strong the punch is, he just comes in and just deflects it slightly off. Real life, a lot of Wing Chun practitioners do this. And while we rely on our structure and our, tri our triangular structure and our focus to, do, to deflect a lot of attacks, the truth is some attacks are just so strong, like from Choi Fat or boxing, that even if you put your arm up, you're gonna get hit through. So it's always good to have a backup skill of having agility, especially for a Snap over here, who's very light. A powerful hit could move her. So with her, she developed a very good sense of agility and head movement. So we're just gonna demonstrate that right now. She's gonna be using Wing Chun and practicing pads, but she'll be using her head movements to dodge all attacks. And that creates a lot more agile fighters. Okay, now let's demonstrate that. So Wing Chun punches. Good. I'm gonna punch. Punch. One, two. One, two. Footwork, head movements are all important. Yes. Good. Good. Your legs are the strongest muscles in your body, and you can roll the opponent off if you get good control of them. Over here. And then you have the basic knowledge of that. So, I'm not saying like you have to really specialize in grappling, but it's another dimension in fighting that you should know and be able to do well enough that you can defend yourself should that happen. So another part, another non-traditional fundamental function over here is uh, flexibility. So mostly Wing Chun kicks over here, so when we fight, mostly Wing Chun kicks are low kicks. So if he does a kick, I mean, usually you disable it and then go for low kicks, either groin kicks or to the knees, to break the knees. But the reason why it's good to have flexibility is if someone catches you in the kick and they lift you up, it's harder for you to take down. So if you catch my kick right here and then he lifts up, a non-flexible person will probably fall much easier. But if I'm flexible enough, I can maintain this balance much better. It's also good for your mobility and it's much better for not getting injured. And you develop the abilities for high kicks as well. If kicking high means that you can control it at a higher level, which means when you do low kicks, your kicks are likely to be even stronger. Head kicks are very strong, so say he holds his head up when we fight, we can fake Wing Chun low kicks right here, and then we can throw a high. Wing Chun people, people don't expect you to throw high kicks, it actually makes a very good combo. So if he comes in attacking right now, and block, Wing Chun punches to open up, and finish it off with a powerful iron uh, house kick. Mm -hmm. So having flexibility is very important. I'll be making a video on stretches which will be coming up soon. So you guys be sure to check that out as well. Okay.